Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. And welcome to another edition of Hot Topics with Peter, a video series that I had planned to continue doing on a daily basis. The problem is, that there weren't a lot of hot topics that happened this week. So people were asking in the comment sections of my videos, is the hot topic series going to continue? Yes, it is going to continue. Why? Because you guys responded in such a delightful, kind, compassionate way. I really, really appreciate it. So many of you were like, I really love this idea. I love you guys, or I love you guys. Who, me? How many of me are there? Um, I love that you are uh, doing the Hot Topics, and I had such a fun time doing it. I really had a fun time sitting down and outlining everything and getting it ready, but I think that kind of made me a little bit nervous. Um, to be honest with you, I'm sure this is no surprise if you have watched many of my drama videos but the way that I do drama videos is you know I will watch a video and then I will respond to it and I'll give my commentary or I'll read an article or I'll see something trending and then I kind of just sit down and just ad lib and you know give my commentary commentary is, is that West Side am I getting ready for the new West Side story um anyway I just kind of give my commentary to it and I think that what made me so nervous in that video was that I had it all outlined in front of me and I felt very professional I did I felt like um Andy Cohen or Anderson Cooper or somebody like that I felt very professional but I was also very very nervous and you know I was this morning listening to the Michelle Collins show on Radio Andy on Sirius Radio I love Michelle Collins I love her show. I think she is absolutely hilarious. Um, and so I was listening to it and she kind of just reads through the, the stories and then she responds to it and says what she uh, thinks about it. And, and that was the other thing was that so many people were like, I wish that you would give more of your opinion about what you think is going on. And so I was thinking about this in relation to my best friend, Tanya Jean, who is the one that came up with this fantastic idea of doing hot topics. And, you know, Tanya and I will drive around at night and I'll drink coffee or we'll have fountain pops. And we just kind of talk about all of the stories that are going on. So I thought, you know, instead of me sitting down and coming up with some great outline, which I might do, but I think in the future, if I have an outline, I am going to give more of my opinion or respond to it. But instead of doing that, I thought I would just go through the stories today. I just kind of looked through two or three stories on um, TMZ and on the other thing, uh, the other, the other thing, the other app that I have, which is Smart News. And I thought that I would just pick out a couple stories as I'm like scrolling through it and tell you guys my response to it. I have to tell you, one of the problems this week is that if I was going to do a Hot Topics video every single day, it would have been completely about the Kardashians because like every single day, um, I can't, I just have to tell you in all, in all honesty, my honest 100% opinion, I am just not that wowed by the Kardashians. I really, to be honest, don't know why we have become a society that is so intrigued by these gals. I really do not understand it. I, I mean, I think they seem very nice. You know, I think they're very pretty. Um, but I don't really understand what great achievements they have accomplished in this world um, for us to be so enamored with them. And I think that's just part of, you know, I, I'm somebody that just loves reality television. I, if you watch my videos, you know, I, I love the housewives. Um, but for me to be like looking through every news story and it was literally like every other news story was was about the Kardashians. I'm like, what? Why are we so? I mean, that I say, I think in itself would be some kind of sociology study that would be interesting. Like, why are we so intrigued? And I know many of you out there are like, well, I'm not. Why are we so intrigued by the Kardashians? I mean, their show is over. They have gone on to other things, and yet. They are still in every single news story out there. So, and I'm sure they will be in a few today. I wanted to actually first get on here and I wanted to see what stories are, um, or what uh, new shows are trending on Netflix. But before I do, uh, the new Sex in the City has come out on HBO Max. Did you guys hear about this? My husband last night watched the first episode. He absolutely loved it. Um, and so I don't understand a lot about what is going on because I haven't watched the first episode. But apparently the premise to the show is that um, I don't want to ruin it for anybody that a main character has died and that it is all kind of centered around that. I was listening to the coverage on, well, hell, y'all are going to know about it anyway. Apparently Mr. Big passed away and they were saying on there that uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's character, um, she seemed more upset about previous things that had happened than his passing away. 
anyway, I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. I'm sure I will watch it coming up here very, very soon. Hell, I'm just catching up. We just watched The Real Housewives of Orange County. Um, we just watched it. Was it last night? No, it was the night before. Last night we went to the Christmas lights. We watched it the night before. Orange County is really heating up this uh, season. I have to say, if you watch Real Housewives of Orange County, I, uh, the whole situation with uh, this Nicole person suing Terry Debro and all of that that came out at the party. I just have to tell you, I am so impressed with how Heather and Terry Debro handled that whole situation. I thought they handled it in a very, very uh, classy way. I mean, other than Heather stomping off upstairs in her 25,000 square foot house and saying, I'm leaving the show, other than that. I thought she handled it in a pretty uh, classy way. So anyway, let's get into... See, I feel more comfortable doing this. This is how I feel more comfortable, is just giving you my um, honest, off-the-cuff response. So I want to go in here really quick, and I want to go to Netflix, and I want to see what shows are trending currently in the United States um, on... Uh, Hold on a second. On Here it is. Top 10 in the United States today. Here are my reading glasses. And number one is Money Heist. I have never heard of this before. Is it a movie? It looks like kind of like The Purge. Eight thieves take hostages and lock themselves in the royal mint of Spain as a criminal mastermind manipulates the police to carry out his plan. That's number one in the United States. Number two is Lost in Space. Um, this is a remake of the... Wait. After crash landing on an alien planet, the Robinson family fights against all odds to survive and escape, but they're surrounded by hidden dangers. That's actually something I would probably watch. The Queen of Flow is number three. 17 years after being wrongly imprisoned, a talented songwriter seeks justice against the men who caused her downfall and killed her family. Well, this is some heavy stuff this week. Okay, number four is Peter Rabbit 2. Number five is... I can't read this. Uh, Coco Melon, a, 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 an animated uh, story. Okay, number four is True Story. A world-famous comedian desperately searches for a way out after a night in Philadelphia with his brothers. Her brother threatens to sabotage more than his success. Where's all the true crime? Where's all the true crime? We need the true crime. Oh, there's top picks for Peter, Kath and Kim. <laughs> Kim, look at me, look at me, look at me. I love Kath and Kim so much. Okay. So anyway, that's what's going on on Netflix. Um, let's get right in here into TMZ. I do know that... Um the singer, Mike Nesmith, passed away from the, mon he, from the monkeys. He passed away and he, at 78 years old. Um, very, very sad. Okay, here it is. Kanye West, take him, run right back to me, makes plea during Hoover show. Let's see what this is about. Okay, hold on a second. It's pulling up. Kanye West was um, electric in his return to the stage in Los Angeles, but also showed he's still struggling to accept his ongoing divorce with his strange wife, Kim Kardashian, begging her to come back so they can be together. Uh, he and Drake hit the stage in front of 70,000. Uh, do you think it's interesting that um, Drake uh, uh, p supposedly pulled his Grammy nominations on the heels of the Astro World tragedy because he, you know, is part of that whole lawsuit and yet he is still taking to the stage and performing? I, I, I think that's kind of a little interesting. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I mean, if, if that is truly the case, why he took down his nominations at the Grammys, I, I talked about this in my uh, video that I did on Monday. They're saying that he either took his Grammy, nomina Gr Grammy nominations down because he doesn't really believe in award shows or because of the Astro World tragedy. Well, if it is because of the Astro World tragedy, my question would be, why are you continuing to perform for a while then? I, I guess it's just an interesting question. Uh, he and Drake hit the stage in front of 70,000 at the LA Memorial Coliseum Thursday night. Goes on and on and on. One of those songs was Runaway. Kanye re continued to repeat, run, by, run right back to me, then saying, more specifically, Kimberly, in quotations. Which is interesting because Kim uh, just recently won Fashion Icon of the Year, and in there, um, in her award uh, sp a speech, she thanked Kanye West for helping her pick out her outfits and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, so there's the story. Do you guys think that uh, Kanye and Kim will get back together? You know, I mean, there's not a TV show to keep us plugged anymore, and Kanye West was hardly ever on the show anyway. So I don't really know what I think about it. I don't believe that the the Pete Davidson, uh, Kim Kardashian romance, <laughs> romance? <laughs> relationship is real. I just don't. I think... I think it might have started off as kind of a flirtatious kind of thing, and then they've kind of run with it a little bit. I don't think it's long-lasting. I don't see, like, Kim Kardashian settling down with Pete Davidson long-term. I just don't—I think the worlds are completely different. Um, and do I see her getting back together with Kanye West? My gut tells me that they will. I I'm seeing Kim Kardashian getting back together with Kanye West. 
Um, you know, I don't know. I, I think a lot of it, like I think with Chloe and Tristan, a big part of why she continues to go back and get together with Tristan is for their child, True. Um, you know, I know that there's another child with another woman now. Um, but I don't believe that Tristan is like planning on getting together with that uh, personal trainer, the woman that he, uh, you know, uh, anyway, with the other child. I think Marilee is her name or something like that. I don't think that he has any plans to get together with her. So um, I think that's one of the reasons why, like, Chloe keeps on going back and going back and going back. You know, I think, if anything, if we can grant the Kardashians this, they do seem very, you know, like, family-oriented, family-centered people. I mean, unless you're Rob Kardashian, then they basically kick you out of the family because you get no screen time. So other than that... They seem very family-oriented, you know, and I think that um, that could be a reason why Kim would get back together with Kanye, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, let me know what you think about all of that major drama in the comment section below. All right, next thing, let's see. Um, do 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 skimming through. Okay, okay. Oh, here, okay, wait. Um... Talking about the Alec Baldwin interview. I have not watched the Alec Baldwin interview yet. Um, Sex in the City. Big's death on Peloton bike causes stock prices to crash. And this was a big thing that they were talking about this morning on the Michelle Collins show that I thought was interesting. That, okay, through the entire episode, first episode, apparently they talk a lot about Peloton and the Peloton bike and all that kind of stuff. And supposedly he died of a heart-related... Well, here, let's read the article. <laughs> but anyway, this morning Peloton stocks had, like, tanked. Um, and people are wondering if it is a result of this television show. If that is the case, I have to say, because they were questioning this morning, you know, is it, um, were they doing that as far as like marketing? Was Peloton hoping that this would be good marketing for them? If that's the case, why would you want somebody to die on one of your bikes that you were trying to market? If that, even if it's fiction, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, let's read the article. Uh... Now, this is amazing. Peloton just tried to soften the blow, saying Mr. Big... Okay, well, wait. Peloton may want to hire a Hollywood type to vet its products being used in the movies because it allowed, and just like that, that's the, the episode of, it's called, and just like that, Sex and the City, to kill off one of its characters on the bike, and Peloton's stock went into free fall. So in case you haven't seen it and you care, read no further, but Big, played by Chris Noth, had a grabber, a.k.a. heart attack, as he pedaled furiously in the saddle and kicked the bucket. Once the word started circulating, Peloton stock price tumbled more than 11%, which is huge. Now, here's the crazy part. Peloton says it's not only allowed its bike to be used in the show, but it also allowed one of its instructors, Jess King, to play an instructor. In other words, it all looked authentic. Yet the company claims it had no clue about the plot line. Okay, now here's an update on it. Now, this is amazing. Peloton just tried to soften the blow, saying Mr. Big lived... What many would call an extravagant lifestyle, including cocktails, cigars, and big steaks. It was at serious risk, as he had a previous cardiac event in season six. These lifestyle choices, and perhaps even his family history, which often is a significant factor, were the likely cause of his death. Well done, Peloton. Um, I think it's interesting, you know, do you, if you had stock in Peloton, did you sell today because of uh, the Sex and the City episode? Let me know in the comment section below. Okay, I think it's interesting that they would even... I, don't you think it's crazy that, I mean, they probably did not assume that somebody would die on their bike when they were using it for a plot line. Okay, let's go on here. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio snags giant Beverly Hills estate added to mass real estate holdings. Oh, God, what if he bought Jeffree Star's house? That would be crazy, wouldn't it? Leonardo DiCaprio, it, no, he didn't, is becoming the king of real estate because he just scooped up another massively ex expensive property. But Je Jeffree Star has had to lower the price of his mansion. Did you guys know that? We'll get to that in a second. I'll look it up. Leo's latest addition to his sizable portfolio of $9.9 .9 million estate in Beverly Hills. As we reported, he just uploaded a, uh, unloaded a Malibu, Malibu pad for $10.3 million. He also owns a $13.8 million Malibu estate and a $23 million lot in the suburb as well. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at this to see if it's not that. But I do know that Jeffree Star had to... Here, let's look it up. Jeffree Star estate sale. Okay. Not an estate sale, but, you know. Okay. Uh, oh, no, that's from 2021 here. Uh, but I... Where did I see the article about this? Past week... No, we don't need any of his, uh, his, <laughs> we don't need any of his junk, this Jeffree Star Cosmetics bundle, forget that. Okay, hold on a second, it's not showing up on here, um, but I do know that he lowered the price of his mansion in Beverly Hills because it wasn't selling. Okay, uh, let's go on and see what else is going on, hold on. 
Uh, Vic, uh, Travis Scott, victim's family pissed. No healing from interview. Let's talk about the Travis Scott interview. Travis Scott says he broke his silence to start a healing process with his fans and the families of Astroworld victims. But an attorney for one of those families says the rapper's words did nothing to ease their pain. Um, a 23-year-old was one of the 10 I'm not going to say the name um, for their anonymity, was one of the 10 attendees who lost their lives last month at the festival show, and his family has since declined to accept money from Travis for funeral costs. They've also filed a lawsuit against Scott and others. Um, we spoke with this person, the, the attorney, who says the nearly hour-long interview was painful for them to watch and certainly didn't start any healing for them. Uh, goes on to say, I, I'm getting texted right now. It's coming up on my phone. <laughs> um, so apparently the interview that Travis Scott did um, did nothing. We had Travis's attorney, Ed McPherson, on TMZ Live Thursday, and he said Travis insisted on speaking to, uh, okay, despite legal risk, to show he really cared. Still, not everyone is buying that. Fisher says the pain is still very deep. In particular, uh, says his sister watched the interview and believes someone can easily seem sorry on camera, but, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's something that we've learned on YouTube with the apology sweatshirt, quite frankly, but she hopes Travis's words were more than an act because her family has been impacted forever. So sad. That whole tragedy is so, so, so sad. Okay, um, I want to get over here and see if they talk about the interview. Do, do, do. Let me look at this really quick. Hold on. Um, oh my god, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville coming to a C near you. Jimmy Buffett's hotel and restaurant chain Margaritaville is taking the high seas, literally turning the whole experience into a cruise ship. Jimmy and a team just announced the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise cruise ship is to set is set to sail for the first time in April, taking off from Bahama. That would be a fun trip. Woo! <laughs> Some people say that there's a woman to blame, but I know. <laughs> The cruise ship holds 685 passengers and features a paradise casino. I'm there, cha-ching, a theater spa, multiple pools, and we imagine a pretty kick ASS bar, too. Jimmy also had a hand in the boat's decor, so I'm sure it's tacky as all hell. Okay, let's get into the next story. Um, Travis Scott insisted on doing Charlemagne interview once to help people heal. Travis uh, Scott wanted to be her, this person, listen, Travis Scott... First of all, you just need to sit and get down. I don't know. I, I Okay, let's get into the interview. Travis Scott wanted to be heard despite ongoing litigation, insisting on sitting down with Charlemagne the God to share his message of healing and how to fix concert safety issues moving forward. So claims Travis's attorney. I ain't buying it. We had Ed McPherson on TMZ Live Thursday who addressed some of the criticism Travis Scott has received from people thinking he shouldn't have done the nearly hour-long chat. McPherson says Travis was adamant he wanted to talk to... Okay, we've already talked about that. I wanted to get to the part where it, they covered just the interview. Oh, my Lord. Gene Simmons from Kiss selling Vegas Mansion for $13.5 for massive profit. The only thing I have to say to that is... <laughs> Detroit! Rock City! <laughs> I love Kiss. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Okay, here it is. Travis Scott. He's making excuses, taking no responsibility. Attorney for victims' family pissed about interview. Oh, here it goes on and on and on. There's already a $750 million lawsuit against Travis and others. Also isn't buying the artist's claim. He had no idea of the mayhem fans were going through in the crowd, even if he wasn't told in his ears. Goes on and on and on. They just kind of carry this story out, don't they? Okay, let's get to the interview. Um... Adele fans pissed with Vegas resale prices, $2,000 to $35,000 a pop, which is so much more expensive than Adele or than Lady Gaga. Who does Adele think she is? You were not born this way. Be easy on me. When's my comedy show in Vegas? Okay. Travis Scott breaks Astroworld silence with Charlemagne denies fans of fans in or injuries. Here it is. Travis Scott is breaking a silence for the first time since Astro World, insisting he did not he didn't know the severity of what was happening in the crowd and alleging the person in his ear never expressed an urgency to immediately stop the show. Travis sat down. Oh, I'd like to hear what that person has to say. Travis sat down with Charlemagne the God for nearly an hour to talk all things about the tragic Houston festival. Travis says he feels a sense of responsibility to figure out what went wrong, but did everything he could with the knowledge he had during the show. Travis claims his in-ear told him to end the show after the guest, a.k.a. Drake, and that he was never told just how bad things were in the crowd. At times, Travis was clearly emotional, especially when talking about the families who lost loved ones, and even says he's met with some of them privately. Travis says, they lost their loved ones. I just uh, always want to be there for them. I'm going to fix this problem and make sure this doesn't happen in the future and be the number one voice for this. We got to figure it out. 
Well, I mean, I guess maybe asking people not to rush the stage would be a beginning to that, Travis Scott. Charl Charlemagne asked Travis if he felt a sense of responsibility for what happened, and while Travis admits he was the face of the festival, he says he feels, excuse me, his responsibility is now to figure out what went wrong and how to prevent it in the future. Well, that. In other words, he never takes responsibility, nor does he lay the blame on anyone else. While he was pressured several times to, uh, to say he was responsible, Travis Scott never gives a straight answer, mostly preaching a message of future prevention. He does, however, say as an artist, he and his team focus on the creativity of the show, not so much as safety and logistics, something that's handled by promoters. One safety possibility Travis suggests, though, ha except it's his name on the show. It's the, sa uh, the same thing as Tana Mojo with TanaCon. I don't understand what these people do not get. Though how exactly it would work is still in the air, is to equip fan festival wristbands with health and location trackers to pinpoint issues in the crowd. Travis says he never heard pleas from the crowd asking him to stop and says he's done the best he can during the shows in the past and even at Astro World to, sh to stop the show when he could see someone needed help. Is there evidence of that? TMZ broke the story. There was an apparent breakdown in communication from the time Houston Fire Department declared the concert a mass casualty event and the time the show ended. We obtained video shop showing cops watching and recording the show nearly 30 minutes after the declaration was allegedly made. Wow. Scott was heavily criticized for photos showing him golfing with Mark Wahlberg and Michael Jordan over Thanksgiving. I mean, yeah, you're devastated and these people and you're golfing with Mark Wahlberg and these people uh, have lost their family members. Wow. Okay, so let's go on and see whatever is this. Okay. Um, let's go on. Oh my god, there's just like so many people that have passed away. It's so sad. Um, Henry Winkler on Happy Days. I know nobody cares about this but me. Fonz collection goes for a bundle. Motor, but I would die to have the Fonz as the Fonz. Back in the day, my cousin and I, we used to play this game in the pool with all these kids in the neighborhood. And you had to run off the pool and you had to like do something. And so they would run off the pool and they would go to Fonz and I would go... That was my little swimming pool thing back in the day. Okay, um, let's see what else is going on. Um, do 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 do. Um, Lamar Odom, I swore off drugs, porn, and dating after breakup with fiance. Let's see. Lamar Odom says he's given up three vices after splitting with his fiance, insisting he's no longer doing drugs, watching porn, or dating women. 42-year-old Odom broke up with Sabrina Parr late last year, just months after the couple was engaged to be married. And in light of the split, Lamar says he's made some major changes in his life, making me wonder, I guess, that apparently uh, drugs, porn, and dating other women was the reason why the relationship didn't work. <gasps> I'm so surprised. Okay, <laughs> let's go on to the next. Oh my god, more people died. It's so sad. I just... Um, oh my lord, I just can't with all of this. Oh my god, Scott Peterson resentenced to life in prison after killing pregnant wife. Well, okay, we'll save that for a true crime. Um, okay, did you hear that, uh, PK Dorit's, uh, husband from uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, that, um, she, uh, that, here it is, Dorit Kimsley has some thoughts on her husband's DUI bust as well as the fatal shooting. Oh my god, uh, Regret and sadness. Real housewife. Okay. Anyway, too sad. Can't get into all of that. I don't care. I don't know that I care about Dorit's uh, opinion about a whole lot of life issues or world issues that are going on up there. Anyway, let's catch up over here on the entertainment on this app. Oh my God. Have you guys heard about this? Okay. So the Facts of Life star. Here, I got to see if I can get a picture and throw it up here. Facts of Life star Elisa Welchel, who played, uh, you take the bad good. Wait. <clears throat> Excuse me. You take the good, you take the bad, you take it all, and then you have the facts of life. The facts of life. I love that show so much. When the world never seems to be living. Okay. Anyway, Lisa Welchel, who played Blair, who is who I always wanted to be. Okay, I didn't want to be Joe, but I ended up Joe. So anyway, but I, what was that her name, Joe? I can't remember. Anyway, I always wanted to be Blair, or Natalie, or Tootie, okay? But no, I ended up Joe. So anyway, just like I didn't want to be Sabrina on the Charlie's Angels, but I always ended up Sabrina, okay? I wanted to be Farah, what was her name on the show? I don't even remember, okay? That whole storyline was so dumb, and then her niece came on the show. Anyway, I loved it. But this is the deal. They did this reunion show. Who was it? It was Courtney Cox or somebody like that that played, uh, hold on a second. Who played her? The Facts of Life. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston played, it was like a live Facts of Life. I can't believe I missed this. I'm gonna have to find it. Anyway, so they had Lisa Welchel on there, and they were like, Lisa Welchel could have played herself because she looked so good. 
And people are wanting to know what her skincare regimen is because they think that she looks so fantastic, which I thought was really cool. Okay, let's go on. Uh, Khloe Kardashian report reportedly makes decision on future with Tristan Thompson. Let's see what it is. After much hope from fans that Khloe Kardashian is finally done with Tristan Thompson, after reports of another cheating scandal involving an NBA player became a father for the third time, the good American founder is apparently over her on and off again love. A source tells people, Mac, a source. I want to be a source so bad. That Kardash Kardashian is moving on from Thompson after a woman named, okay, we already know all this. I talked about this. But she's, is she staying gone from this? That Kardashian knows about the baby. We already know that. Okay. This all started with Jordan Woods back in the day. Is there anything else I need to know on here about the world? Okay, we know Lisa Welchel. Um, <laughs> Brittany's dad just asked for access to her estate again a month after she was freed. Leave her alone. Leave Brittany alone. Okay. Uh, she may be free, but Jamie Spears and Britney Spears' conservatorship issues are far from over. Less than a... Kai let this girl live her life. Less than a month after Los Angeles Superior Court, Judge Brenda J. Penny terminated Britney's conservatorship and ruled that she was fit to manage her own estate and life. Her father, Jamie Spears, asked for access to her finances one more time. Give me a break. Variety reported on December 8th that Jamie... Uh, who was conservator over conservator conservator over Britney's estate from 2008 to 2021 appeared remotely by phone at a court here in Equa. Um, Jamie's request to access Britney's estate again comes after Judge Penny removed him as a conservator. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Britney is worth 60 million dollars. Which where did all of her money go? I mean, seriously. Per a 2021 report by Forbes, Jamie has made at least five million dollars as Britney's conservator since he took on the role in 2008. He needs to just leave her alone. What does this person say? Britney Spears' father, Jamie Spears, oh, and then an ad, uh, appeared remotely by phone at today's hearing. He is it, anyway, leave her alone. Okay. Along with her court ordered salary to her father, Britney has to pay for Jamie's $2,000 per month office, which has cost her almost $300,000 in 12 years. Britney has also had to pay estimated millions of dollars in legal fees for both her attorney and Jamie's. According to Forbes, court records from 2018 to 2019 reveal that Jamie's law firm at the time, Freeman, Freeman and Smiley, <laughs> Charge Britney $170,000 for her father's legal fees. These people just screwed Britney so bad. I can't, I, I, I don't blame her for not wanting anything to do with them. Makes me so sad. And now we have come to the end of another episode of Peter's Hot Topics of the Day. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this ad lib version where I just read through the stories, well, that was more fun for me. So anyway, I love you guys so much. I hope that you're having a magical beginning to your weekend. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.